Konnichiwa Psychonaut from Persona 5 in real life. How mad is that? They actually recreated the game in real life. We live in a pretty trippy place. And I thought, what, what better place than to talk about my most terrifying ketamine experiences. So, let's just cut straight to the point. I'm in recovery from ketamine addiction. And um, it's going pretty well. I'll detail that more in, a, in an extra video. But uh, for now, we'll talk about some of the most terrifying experiences I had on this uh, dissociative drug whilst taking in the scenery of Sanganjaya, the inspiration for Yong Yonganjaya? Yonganjaya? I can't remember. In uh, Persona 5, very famous JRPG. This is actually Cafe Le Blanc, pretty much. I'm gonna go in there and get the, the chicken curry and ice latte Persona 5 set menu. Soon, but let's just get into actually what I'm supposed to be talking about. So, recently I had my most disturbing ketamine experience um, in the past year, so yeah, pretty recently. And um, basically, I took so much that it ended up completely breaking reality itself. It was actually crazy. It was beyond death. It was like being trapped in an eternal void of not even nothing, it's just like a freeze frame. It was like I was trapped in a freeze frame and my consciousness was literally stuck there. What was happening was I was playing Persona, no, <laughs> no I wasn't actually playing Persona this, this time around. I was um, playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and for some reason decided, well, I should take some <laughs> a dissociative drug and play a video game. Probably doesn't really make much sense considering that I forget all the controls while I'm trying to play it. But uh, that's the reality of being an addict. But what ended up happening was, um, I thought, I just started getting just kettier and kettier, and I realized that um, the game had frozen, or, or like, my, I was putting in, in, inputting button commands, and the game wasn't responding, so I just thought, initially thought, oh right, basically, <laughs> the game just glitched out, Bethesda style. But then, the game breaking effects then seeped into my room, and I started to then entertain this thought of like, oh shit, it's not the game that's broken, it's me. And then as soon as I had that thought, it was like the part of my brain that interprets physics and the logical qualities of reality um, completely broke down. And um, what ended up happening was, I, in, in a panic, I reached my, for my phone thinking, oh shit, maybe this will anchor me back to reality if I get, get some light in my, in my eyes, it might refire my um, neurons and re-establish the pathways. But what ended up happening was, um, my phone just literally was like glitching, glitching out like the Matrix style. All that, literally could not, my brain could not form a cohesive image of everything. It was all just a blur. Um, and then, when I put the phone down and turned the game off and was in, in darkness, literally, I just, everything went black. Like, the, the, like, there was enough light, natural light in the room to be able to realize that it wasn't all complete darkness, but my consciousness just went completely black because it was like there wasn't enough stimuli to keep my brain going. Obviously, this is all just um, assumptions on what was going on uh, biologically in my brain. But after that, what ended up happening was I'd, I'd, I'd wriggle around and, and try and break out of this freeze frame. I was basically like stuck in a freeze frame. And as I'd hit something, I'd hit like my wall, part of my wall would like rematerialize, just like instantly. And then as I sort of like became fixated on it, it would just stay there. But then as soon as I, as my consciousness sort of um, lost its grasp on what I was looking at, it it just faded away and then as I would hit different things in the room like I went up to this this was like blank I'd hit it and then it would appear it was really really bizarre it was it was like a game glitching out in reality and um, it was probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my whole life because I thought this is it this is finally where I get trapped inside <laughs> this freeze frame state of consciousness but thankfully we made it back as you can see we're in this park a bit interesting these Japanese parts, they're very minimalist. I feel like if I go in there I'm just gonna look like a weirdo, so I won't be doing that. 
it's absolutely popping today in Sanganjaya. It's usually like semi quiet if you look on the videos. But uh, there's an actual, uh, there's a music festival here. I might check it out, but not on drugs, because that's so very bad. So, um, where was I? So, in a desperate, in the, it, basically, I just kept like coming out of this freeze frame state and um, going back into it and I was just, I was trying to scream but I couldn't, it, it was like my brain, parts of my brain were shutting off and the uh, bits of my body that was connected to just couldn't fathom how to handle interfacing with reality. So uh, I reached for my phone again because I'm like oh shit I might have to call an ambulance and as I touched the phone, the phone flew over to the other side of the room and I perceived the other side of the room, my desk, and my desk like appeared and I was like Ugh. But I, I, I literally could not move my body, I could only move my hands and that. It was almost like being in sleep paralysis. Um, no audio hallucinations, anything, everyone was like completely silent. And I was just literally, almost, and I felt myself like, no, after that I felt myself alongside the phone, no clipping through my bed and that, like, you know like when you have a dream, or when you, you, you're asleep, trying to get sleep and you feel that falling sensation, it was like that, going back and forth, back and forth, looping. Absolutely horrifying, and it, it ended up resulting in me after a while, literally just trying to wriggle and wriggle and wriggle, and I broke out of like this freeze frame. And uh, just letting me look at the beautiful Japanese scenery uh, so, so for a, a little while because probably sick of my face. So I broke out of that, and I literally just jumped off my bed, or like wriggled, like it basically just it was like a fish on a line, and I wriggled out, I wriggled off my bed and ended up basically <laughs> what well, I felt like I no clicked through the door but I must have actually opened it but everything was literally just so jolted like that it was honestly like I was in some I was in like 0.75 times speed on a YouTube video and uh, but also but, but also choppy as well clipping like I was lagging out and my frame rate was done in and so I ended up going downstairs and then literally I went, went downstairs and then this was possibly the scariest moment of my life. I looked out into my garden and it was just, there was nothingness. It was just white, nothingness. And, I felt like, and then in that moment I thought, oh right, I'm now trapped in my house in this dimension forever because I finally broke my brain with uh, too much, too much spaghetti of mine. Also another persona reference, this is the that purple monster in the game. And there's the batting, the batting station over there. I'll put the, put the pictures in just for anyone else who is interested in Persona and also is interested in <laughs> the mechanics of the Ketty brain. Right, we'll, uh, walk, we'll walk back around again. And and then, after that, I was like, I've just given up. So I just fell onto the floor and I just screamed and screamed and screamed. I was wriggling around and everything until what ended up happening was, as I was wriggling around and literally just writhing, more and more of my senses came back as I could start to hear things, I could start to hear the, hear the birds outside and then as I'd writhe around again like just as forcefully as I could then I started to get like more more bodily functions back so my speech came back because I couldn't speak at all it was just like mumbling you know what it's like when you have too much spaghetti mine you end up um, you end up just bumbling everything and it sort of feels like it cuts off your ability to speak. Um, I'd be interested to see what the actual scientific reasoning is with that. I know that many people say that Ket turns off parts of the brain in like higher doses when you're K-holding, but this was not a K-hole, this was, this was beyond, this was beyond the K-hole. It was something else entirely. I've not actually heard many people talk about this and it's actually happened three times, but this was the worst. The other two times, <laughs> I ended up Basically, I remember I was watching um, I was watching Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, and I was so unbelievably immersed into what was happening that I lost all sense of having a body and just became the screen. And the screen basically filled my entire vision, and I, I became, basically was I just was the perception of the show. I just it, it was just there was no it, there was no idea of oh I'm, a, I'm in a human body a human mind watching this 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 goddamn enemy um it felt exactly like just being a screen like I just it was like i was the, a projector that was seriously trippy not scary in the moment it was beautiful but then what was scary was um i ended up 
well, after the show finished and literally the credits rolled, it was like, it was like the, it, the, the, I was stuck in the interim period between me becoming conscious of my body again, and I basically K-holed, uh, and, and was just stuck, and it was just literal blackness. It wasn't like the, the traditional K-holes of like, um, falling through this these weird like machine scapes and geometry. It was, it was me just, it was just black, it was just pure blackness, and it was just void. And then I was just got, and apparently I was sort of screaming my head off because then, unfortunately, God bless the soul, my mum and dad had to wear, uh, had to basically come and help me because I was screaming and I had no idea that I was screaming because obviously I thought I'd died. So many times this has happened, I thought I've, I've passed on to the other side, but not in the, the white light, oh, it's all Nirvana and everything sort of way. But, um, but in a, oh God, no, I've broken consciousness and there's no coming back, sort of existential dread kind of way. Really not what you want, is it, to be honest, mate? So yeah, that was scary. Then another time, I remember I was watching, um, <laughs> I forgot, honestly, I've got loads of these, because obviously I've had a really bad addiction to this substance, and I would really like to move on with my life. I'm um, doing quite well now, though, at the minute, thank God, and also it's really helped being in this country, because uh, I've been for quite a bit, and I'm doing some serious mental and physical detoxing and spiritual cleansing. Definitely helps the, with the fact that uh, J Japan has a, a beautiful, connection to the life stream or the force that we know as uh, Shintoism. Um, it's really interesting idea of like a d the detached uh, idea of God rather than being it being some figure it's like the, literally the energy of life is r rather uh, rather inspiring and enlightening uh, and perfect medicine for getting over this bloody dissociative. So uh, another time I was watching Mad Men and uh, I was just so immersed because I used to love just having spaghetti mine and getting immersed into shows it really it really was one of life's greatest pleasures but then it became a, um, quite horrendous because it, it it hurt my love of watching film and, and TV and, and media because I was like oh I literally can't do this without being on cat so what happened was I was just I was getting frustrated because I wasn't reaching that, that ketty level of immersion and I just kept having more and more and more and more and it wasn't doing anything and then I was like oh I just sacked it off for hours and I was like, oh, it's not doing anything, just let it go. And then <laughs> I just had the thought to be like, all oh, right, we'll just, we'll just, uh, we'll just try the, the process over again. I was completely sober and then I just had this one tiny little um, dosage of it and it completely just eradicated my uh, understanding of scale in, in the show. So like characters were becoming min minis like enlarging it and becoming minuscule and they'd walk into a room and they look like little micro people you know them like optical illusions where there's like a big table and a small person uh, it was a bit like that and it kept happening and um, Harry Kane the character he his head kept enlarging and um, minimizing it started to freak me out I was like oh god here we go I've broken reality again so I slammed the laptop down and I was like oh shit, I shouldn't have done that because it was sort of so fast that my brain couldn't process it in that catty state and then I literally did the thing where I went when I was like, riding around going crazy again and uh, I absolutely twatted my, my foot on my windowsill and almost broke it, it was absolutely horrible then another time God, I've done some seriously dark things on this drug um, but it's all fun and games now looking back because you've got to look back on your past and laugh and make sure that you um, make sure that you, 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 you're processing all this, integrating it, take it seriously but also after the fact try and have a laugh about it and try and see the 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 positives and, and, and don't just don't turn it into a victim mentality thing at least that's what's helped me getting over all this stuff so what happened another time was <laughs> I was on my, I, I took so much care and I, I, well, I, I struggled sleeping on ketamine. I've just said ketamine, I should have said spaghetti mine to avoid the demonetization. Oh well, we've said it now, who cares? Um, so I took some Valium, only a little bit, just to get me to sleep. Well, I, but I took it before I took the, 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 the special K and um, I thought, all oh, right, well, at least later on, uh, after I've done, after I'm done having all of this spaghetti mine, I'll be able to go to sleep after it. <laughs> Not a very clever idea, apparently, because what ended up happening was the drugs synergized in quite a destructive way, and the, the dissociation and, 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 and 
nullification of mind just in increased tenfold and I literally I just I literally woke up the next day having no idea what happened there was dirt all over the floor and it turns out I tried to open tried to I, I was jumping on the bed watching in my underpants speaking in tongues watching what's it called uh, Junior Bake Off so Bake Off's like some cooking program in the UK and I was watching the Junior version. I didn't even know it existed, I didn't even know. So I literally must have just been going through the channels like blah, 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 really randomly. Oh, it was honestly really bizarre. And um, after that, I, I must have tried getting out my window because, and then falling off onto the floor because I woke up on the floor and I knocked my cactus all over me and there was dirt everywhere and it was really not very good, man. So yeah, that was another horrendous one. And, but something obviously I look back on and laugh now. How can you not laugh at that? Jumping on your bed in your underpants, speaking in tongues, watching Junior Bake Off, covered in dirt. Really quite bizarre. Definitely got, definitely not normal, I've realized. But uh, I'm just trying to love myself for who I am and not to reject <laughs> my uh, a surreal state of being. Definitely was born on Zeta Reticuli, I mean. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. To be fair, there's probably some more. I could do a whole series of this, like terrifying ketamine experiences, terrifying K-hole um, experiences as well. So if you enjoyed hearing about my foray into madness, please let me know. And uh, definitely check out Sangen Jaya if you're a Persona 5 fan. It's rather, uh, I'll tell you what, taking ketamine is surreal, but what's even more surreal is seeing this place, IRL. Anyway, I'm about to go to Café Le Blanc, get myself a curry and an ice latte, and think about, ooh, umbilical. Is it like the, about the eraser? Eraser head baby loves getting some scran in there. Anyway, I've, I've talked for far too long now. Sayonara, psychonauts.